I've uh, got David Curry in the studio and as uh, part of our uh, commitment to uh, all things environmental and marine and from a faith-based perspective as well. But we're talking about uh, our Earth Week and uh, things we can do to unpack that. Uh, David, thanks for coming into the studio. Appreciate you being here. Okay. As ever. Um, you're a regular guest on Community Matters, talking about all things environment, particularly marine environment. Most recently, if people are listening to that program, but specifically at the moment, really interested to uh, hear what kind of things people can do um, to look after the environment. What can we do? What changes can we make to our lifestyles? What are the sort of things that um, ordinary folks can do? And by ordinary folks, I guess I mean everybody, because we're all pretty ordinary. You're right. Yeah, that's right. I mean. Just look now what's coming up in our shops, of course. Christmas is here with a big C. Mm. And I think Christmas would be a good time to demonstrate whether you are actually bothered about uh, you know, the environment. Mm. And I would ask you to, let's think about greening Christmas. All right, so what does that mean, greening Christmas? Because I, I immediately think, well, I, my preferential tree for Christmas is a, a, a green tree, which is um, ideally it would be one that's in the pot. I have to confess and say I don't, so I'm immediately an enemy of the environment. I'm really sorry about that. Um, but how do, you, how do we green Christmas? What does that okay, mean? Okay, one of our major problems today on land and sea is plastic. We are un, you know, up to our eyes in plastic. And there are many, many good schemes within the city about plastic and recycling plastic or changing the whole ethos of using plastic. Now think of Christmas. Think of that lovely stuff called glitter, which we throw all over the place Mm. by the ton. Mm. It's plastic and you can't recycle it. Mm. Um, So think carefully about what you buy at Christmas if there's any plastic in it, see if there's an alternative, and you'll have a very good impact on the environment. Then, uh, you know, as individuals or as collectively, you know, be it a church or a society of any kind, if you all looked at that thing about addressing the problem of plastic use at Christmas, you've done a very good start there. I guess I know there are uh, different papers, aren't there? Because there, there's kinds of wrapping paper that are really not that useful for the environment, but other types of wrapping paper are available, as my wife has been telling me every year and making me sort that one out. That's right. I mean, some papers have got this thin film of foil, which you can't do anything with. Mm. It's not recyclable. Looks pretty, looks shiny, it does, looks festive. It does, but there are also some papers <clears throat> which are just pure paper and also very shiny and, and, and festive as well and recyclable. And it's just little simple things like that. Before you buy it, think. Can this be recycled? The tree, you talked about the tree, for instance. Yep. I mean, now there's a big thing now in local authorities, isn't there, with recycling. Your, they will actually collect your old Christmas tree and recycle it. Um, yeah, so we've got two words, choice, and also recycling as well. Just think about that. Can you choose something different? And can it be recycled? Very good. So think about Christmas differently this year. Mm. I'm not saying you have a dull Christmas, <laughs> by all means, but there are alternatives to all that shiny, glossy stuff which we can't recycle. Mm. And it's affecting our seas. It's choking our seas. Mm. Is there... Um, is there... A, um, trying to deal with my own guilt complex here is there a big problem with buying a pre-cut tree as opposed to maybe going smaller having something in a pot you can use year after year is that a big issue or does the recycling of those trees help to offset that what's what's the story with that david in your well yeah it's a matter of choice again um you can have a potted tree uh in your garden so when you finish with it you just take it out in the garden again ready for next year um that's always a good idea um, but there's also the trees you can buy and in the knowledge that you know that it will be recycled by the local authority and you end, it'll end up as compost and mm. um, pathway gravel and all sorts of things there. Mm. So, yeah, it's a matter of choice. Oh, I'm feeling a little bit easier on that score. Um, wider than Christmas, um, just briefly, David, I mean, there's, there's probably a million things we could do to change our lives. If, if someone came to you and said, right, I've got... I can make one lifestyle change. Can you advise me what that could be that would help the environment uh, and something that I could do and could sustain, not have a grandiose idea that's just going to fail after a week, 
what could I do? What would you say it would be generally, not just at Christmas? I think diet is an important thing which we can look at. We're always very reticent to just look at our own diets and acknowledge that we know that in fact what we're eating is not good for us. So let's look at our diet and just think, what can I do better? I'm not saying be vegetarian. I'm not saying being vegan. I'm just saying make a wise choice. Have a, a varied diet. Um, yes, the more plant-based diet you can have, the better. I mean, that goes without saying. But, yeah, just think before you buy. Fresh fruit, fresh vegetables. All the best. Or grow it yourself. No, there's a thing. Oh, there's a thing. Mm. Yeah, just a passion in the garden to grow your own veg. Mm. They do taste different. Potatoes grown in the bucket in the backyard does taste different. Mm. Carrots do as well. Mm. And all your own vegetables, celery and stuff like that. All right, I think we've got another interview coming on here, David, where I can ask you, how can we easily grow our own vegetables? But for now, we'll call it a day on that. Thank you very much. Short, sharp snippets of um, uh, advice there, David. David is the environmental uh, um, advisor for the Anglican Diocese of Exeter, for those of us who uh, have uh, not heard David before. Thanks very much, David. And we'll talk about more things environmental next time you're on air.